Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, ADHD, is more than just a difficulty in staying focused. It's a complex neurodevelopmental disorder that affects across all stages of life. Hey there, welcome back to my channel. If you're here for the first time, I'm Devi Sundar, and in my channel, I talk about breath, mental health, and occupational well-being. And in this part two of ADHD, I'm going to deep dive into the neurobiology of ADHD, exploring its genetic roots, brain function, and how it manifests differently in children, teenagers, and adults. The hallmark symptoms of ADHD are inattention, hyperactivity, and impulsivity. But what causes these behaviors? Advances in neuroscience have shown that ADHD originates from structural and functional differences in the brain. Studies using brain imaging techniques like MRI have highlighted several key regions involved. For instance, the prefrontal cortex, which helps us to manage attention, make decisions, and control impulses, often shows reduced activity and volume in individuals with ADHD. Other areas like basal ganglia and cerebellum involved in the motor control and executive function are also impacted. These structural differences explain why someone with ADHD might struggle with tasks requiring sustained focus and impulse control. But wait, what about the root causes? ADHD is highly irritable with genetic factors contributing up to 80% of the risk. And researchers have identified uh, several genes linked with the disorder, particularly those involved in the brain's dopamine system. Dopamine and norepinephrine are the neurotransmitters that are very important for um, regulating our attention and behavior. In ADHD, there's often an imbalance between these two neurotransmitters, leading to the characteristic symptoms of hyperactivity inattention and impulsivity. Let's take a look at Ali, a 15-year-old teenager diagnosed with ADHD. Like many others with disorder, Ali struggles to focus in class and has the trouble controlling impulses. An MRI scan revealed reduced volume in Ali's prefrontal cortex and basal ganglia, the regions responsible for tension and impulse control. The functional brain scan also shows a decreased activation in these areas when Ali is performing tasks that require focus. With treatment plan including medication and therapy to balance the dopamine levels, Ali can improve focus, academic performance, and social interactions. ADHD doesn't look the same at every age. The way the symptoms manifest can change drastically from childhood to the adulthood. In children, ADHD often most noticeable, hyperactivity, impulsivity, and difficulty following instructions are common signs. This can make the school challenging as tasks requiring sustained attention become very overwhelming. Let's take an uh, example of Amy, a nine-year-old who can't stay seated in the class. Despite her intelligence, her ADHD makes it hard to focus on tasks, affecting both the academic performance and her relationships. As children with ADHD grow into the teenage years, symptoms evolve. Hyperactivity might decrease, but issues with inattention and impulsivity often persist. Let's take the same example of Ali, who was previously 15, now 17, struggles with procrastination and frustration in school. His impulsive behavior sometimes leads to risky decisions, showing how ADHD can influence behavior beyond just academics. By adulthood, ADHD symptoms become internalized. Inattention manifests as a disorganization and difficulty with time management, while impulsivity might affect the relationships and the career. Let's take the example of Sarah, 35, a creative professional, finds that ADHD makes it hard to manage the time and stay organized at work. With the right support like cognitive behavioral therapy and other multiple integrative therapies and coaching, she learns strategies to thrive. While genetics plays a significant role, environmental factors also affect ADHD to some degree. Growing up in a supportive, structured environment can mitigate the disorder's impact. On the other hand, a chaotic or stressful environment might worsen the symptoms. A balanced approach combining the structure, understanding, and tailored intervention can help individuals with ADHD at every stage of their life. The future of ADHD research is promising. Scientists are working to identify the brain biomarkers that could guide the diagnosis and treatment. Personalized and integrative medicine tailoring treatments to an individual's unique brain profile is on the horizon. With continued advancement, the goal is to improve the quality of life for individuals with ADHD from childhood to the adulthood. Understanding ADHD means recognizing the complexity of the disorder and its impact across the lifespan. With the right support and knowledge, individuals with ADHD can lead a successful and a fulfilling life. If you or someone you know is struggling with ADHD, don't hesitate to reach out for help. Reach out to us for tailored holistic support.
I hope you found this content informative. If it's so, then don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. As usual, stay curious, stay healthy. Signing off, Devi Sundar.